Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to make kimchi quesadillas. So if you guys want to know how to make this, hit that subscribe button and watch me cook. Now depending on your tortilla preference, this is going to make two to three servings. I chose to make flour. Some people like to use corn because they say it's a crispier crunch into the bite. But I mean, I feel like it gives it a different taste. And so I prefer to use flour because it's just, I don't know, I, I feel like it works better together. Again, that's my preference. It's up to you. But uh, you can use either or. Let's start this whole thing off. I am adding some butter right into the pan while I gather up all of my ingredients. And I'm going to let this completely melt before I start adding everything together. This takes probably five minutes to make at most. And so it's a really good snack, light lunch, vegetarian. You can add some meat into it if you want more protein. It, this can go either way. It's going to work well, whatever you decide to do with this. Now I'm using some well-fermented kimchi into my quesadilla so I'm using about a half a cup this is again two to three servings depending on the size of your tortillas if you use those little street corn tortilla sizes it'll make you a lot more but I mean that's just not a quesadilla now is it so if you get the regular tortilla size this is what's gonna work for you I am using scissors right into the pan because you know again less dishes let's make things easier for us so cut it right into the pan you want to make little bite-sized pieces because you don't want to be ripping out a whole thing of kimchi when you're trying to eat a bite of your quesadilla. Again, if you want to add meat to this, you can. If it's raw, cook it first. If it's already something that's cooked, you want to make, make them into bite-sized pieces and cut it and just throw it right into the kimchi and saute it all up together. If you're going to go vegan, if you have the right tortillas and you have the right cheese and your kimchi is made vegan style, then that'll also work for you too. If your kimchi is spicy enough, you can omit this part. But if you want it a little bit more spicy, add a little more kick, add some red pepper flakes right into this. I added about a teaspoon in mine. It did give it a nice kick to it. My kids still ate it. They did tell me it was spicy, but I feel like the cheese and the sesame oil kind of helped mute it a little bit. And in case you're wondering, this is the kind that I used. These people were kind enough to send me this package. And so, I mean, I love their peppers. I think it tastes amazing. Okay, moving on. Now I am adding a teaspoon of sesame oil right on top of this whole mixture here. And by the way, I am cooking this on a medium high heat setting. So watch your stove top. Again, every oven or every stove top varies, but this is about a medium high heat on like one little side of the pan that I'm using. I'm also adding about a teaspoon of Splenda in mine. You can use sugar as well, but I'm using Splenda in mine. I don't feel the need to add any other veggies inside of this dish because when you make the kimchi, well if you make your own then you know what's in it, but mostly you have like some ground onions and some garlic and all the taste is already in there, all the flavors are right there. So I don't feel like it's necessary to add more into this. Some people like a more onion flavor, so if you do, I would go ahead and slice some of those up and throw it in there and saute it all together as well. But again, it's something I don't feel it's necessary. I did end up sauteing it for about two minutes max probably because everything was nicely fermented and all I'm doing is combining a little bit more flavor into it just to give it a good spicy kick with the extra red pepper flakes. Now I've grabbed the second pan and I'm adding my tortilla right into it just to heat it up. Your skillet has to heat up obviously first before this can, this can warm up on both sides. But um, I did go ahead and throw my tortilla in there and let it sit there. I am letting it heat up probably about a good 30 seconds on both sides before I added my cheese right on top. Now give yourself some room when you put your cheese right on top because when you fold it, it's going to start moving around and you want to make sure it seals the edges instead of spewing out of it. I am using mozzarella because I feel like it's the cheese that works best with the kimchi flavor. It doesn't overpower the kimchi flavor because I mean cheddar cheese kind of does that. Any yellow cheese I feel like really does that. So mozzarella is my preference. Once you have your cheese on there and it's been on there for about a good, what, 15 to 20 seconds or so, I don't know. Go ahead and add your kimchi right on top that we just sauteed. And then just grab a clean spatula, close it up, and then we're going to let it seal and cook for a good 30 seconds again on each side. And that's it. Everything should be nicely melted and you have a nice little kimchi quesadilla. Kimchi is one of those dishes where if you love it, it's going to go well with a lot of different foods. Have you guys ever tried kimchi spaghetti? It's really good. You know what? I'm going to make a video just for you guys one day for that. Because really, I mean, I love it personally. Kimchi is really good. It works well. Fusion food is bomb. So, yeah. Let's do that. I'm in this whole thinking mode and running off track here. 
Now I added green onions as my garnishment and little bits of that into your bite. It actually tastes amazing. If you guys want, you can add some sour cream and dip it into that. I personally don't think it's needed. I used a pair of scissors to cut mine up and held it up with a clean pair of tongs. And I mean, it's just easy. It's so good. If you guys like this recipe, please hit that subscribe button, like it, share it, hit the notification bell. And until the next meal, thank you for watching. Watch me cook.